What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, May the 4th. Be with you. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the master of hype, Snow Bike Mike. May the 4th be with you, Greg. Mike, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling good, Greg. Uh, you know, yesterday we had a really special X cast, and uh, it was an interesting one for me. Of course, my first time with a, a nice, solid, hard hitting interview. Not what I wanted out of my first Phil experience, but something that you had to do. And so it took a lot. It took a lot out of me on that one. I didn't think we were going to go that way, but we had to. Uh, if you have no idea what Mike's talking about, ladies and gentlemen, right now on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games and podcast services around the globe, the Kind of Funny X cast is live with its Phil Spencer interview. Uh, if you haven't watched the video, I doubt you've been able to dodge the news because <laughs> this is going to be an interesting Kind of Funny Games daily. Uh, Pretty much all the news stories are pulled from your wow. conversation That's with cool. Phil. And in our infinite wisdom wisdom yesterday, which really I think was blessing, uh, he was kind of like, yo, we should probably just use Games Daily tomorrow to be a debrief on exactly what mm. went on with that interview and stuff yeah. because it was so incredible. There were so many tidbits in it, and it was such a, a fantastic conversation piece, let alone something we don't see a lot. That we're like, yeah, that probably makes the most sense. And lo and behold, yes, I think it's what I was scrolling through every story pretty much except for one. I think we have six stories right now and all the way through five. It'll be a unity layoff at six oh. is the only one you didn't cover in the X cast ahead of time. Uh, if you've missed it so far, we, of course, will break it down and talk about it. Uh, but before we do any of that. I'll remind you, of course, that this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you know about. If you like that, be part of the show by writing in for free with your questions, comments, and concerns about the day's news over at kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Then you can tune in to watch us record the show live for free on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. If you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on demand over on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and listening on podcast services around the globe. Of course, all of that is well and good and free. If you want the premium experience, if you want the best kind of fun Ooh. he has to offer, if you want to support all 11 of us as we continue to make the best fucking content we can, head over to patreon.com slash kind of funny. Over on patreon.com slash kind of funny, you, of course, could get each and every episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily ad-free. You could get the ability to watch us record the podcasts that aren't embargoed live as we record them like this afternoon's PS I Love You XOXO. And, of course, you could get dozens and dozens of monthly exclusive programming like Greg Way, Remember Blank, and so much more only on patreon.com slash kind of funny. If you want another way to support us, of course, use the Epic Creator Code kind of funny when you're checking out of the Epic Game Store or buying Fortnite Rocket League bucks all of that jazz whenever you're on a console of your choice. Housekeeping for you. Later today, we have a new episode of the Kind of Funny Games cast going live, and it's our Star Wars Jedi Survivor spoiler cast. That's right. It's me, Boss Baby, a.k.a. CEO Junior Barrett Courtney, and Big Kev Dog talking about that their Jedi game. Cal story, all gloves off, our favorite parts, all spoilers. If you haven't beaten the game, don't worry. This isn't a glass of ice cold milk. It won't go bad anytime soon. It'll be there when you want it on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and the games cast podcast feed. Uh, Lakers head says, spoiler cast already. It just came out low. People already beat it. People already beat it. A lot of people wrote in about this. A lot of people are real Star Wars fans. Laker head we can't all just be only pikmin fans and i just fucking said it's not milk it won't go bad it's when not you go beat bad. it when you beat it it'll be there for you god damn it I sorry hate we wanted a jedi I hate cast it. before zelda came out and took over the fucking world later no, today <laughs> later today is still the may the fourth and the team is going to be playing through jedi survivor over on our streams we have all sorts of fun surprises including andy juan kenobi teaching nick the force and where in the world is kev 2d2 want to hear mike baka the truckie do his patented tahoe scream tune in to twitch.tv slash kind of funny games right after this episode of uh kind of funny games daily or check it out later of course youtube.com slash kind of funny games greg that's all well and good but we also missed one very important piece of housekeeping may the fourth stream gonna be exciting and fun but something goes down before that that really matters. You're right. Come on, Greg. Bless it. Don't blame me. Bless it. Tell the dunk. people what's going down. Ladies and gentlemen, today, after Kind of Funny Games Daily, but before May the 4th, 
KFW kind of mania is happening. The end of our season that you funded over on patreon.com slash kind of funny. Of course, this is the granddaddy of them all. Kind of mania. The one, the only Johnny Ace refuses to stand down, even though he wasn't invited to this pay-per-view and has a mystery opponent. Mike finally squares off against Panda Finn, the kind of funny community member who yep. clawed his way out of the basement to be a competitor. Uh, then of course, the former commish, Xavier Woods, a.k.a. Austin Creed, will take on Hideo Kojima and Paris Lilly in a triple threat to crown the kind of funny champion. And then our main event, your Twitch champion, Alana Pierce, unstoppable in the entire run of KFW, will face off against JNW's own Joey Noel in a title for title ladder match. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a really good one. This one's going to be, be a really, really good, good one, Greg, of course. It has been a great second season. Uh, great midday mayhem so far. Cannot wait for kind of mania. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producer, Delaney Twining, who of course made this happen over on patreon.com slash kind of funny. And today we're brought to you by honey and rocket money, but we'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper report. <laughs> Time for some news. Six items on the Roper report. A baker's dozen. Thank you. Now, as I said, five out of six stories are pulled from the kind of funny X cast because that's how well it was. And we wanted to use this as let's talk about that Phil Spencer yeah. interview. So there's a few different ways to go before we even get into it. Again, you can watch the X cast there. We're going to go through the news stories that people have broken out of our own content. But before we jump into that, I want to start at the top. And Mike, obviously, you're getting compliments all over the Internet right now. Everyone thinks you did such a great job. As your mentor, you did such an amazing, fucking fantastic job with this interview. I want you to know that. All right. I want you to know that. Like, we've, you know, thanks, homie. I've been lucky enough to see you uh, start as just some weird kid outside of a <laughs> TwitchCon panel when I met you. The interviews you did with us, the stuff you've done on your own channel, the streams, the blah, 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 blah. You know, we started the X cast with you, uh, Gary, as the idea. Mm -hmm. Then we brought in Alana. Then eventually she had to leave. We brought in Paris. And it's been a show we do because it's a passion project for you. It's a passion project for our audience. We know that there's an Xbox audience out there. And in the same way, I feel that Podcast Beyond episode 150 was me, Colin, and Clement stepping up and being like, yo, we know Roper got laid off. And we know there's people who have come before us and yada, yada. This is what it is. This is the brand. This is the logo. This is what we're making. This is such a amazing coming out party for what you guys have built with this show. Because you know, Thanks, every week I'm there listening, I'm talking yeah. about it, I'm having a great time. And I, I've said, I, I, you know, I think a couple weeks ago it was a specific episode that you, Gary, and Paris's, uh, you know, back and forth, your repertoire together, right, really reminded me so much of what I think was my golden age of beyond, right, in that 150 onward period. And so to see you guys suddenly get that today, to see the numbers, right, I checked right before we went live, and the back end on our side of the YouTube as creators, you're over 70,000 views on this episode, which, of course, is not what we do this for. You can look at a lot of our other videos that don't get that. But for a show that we have been putting time, effort, money into for so long to see you have an episode where the entire Xbox community has come to it, the entire video game industry is watching it and listening to it and reporting on it. Congratulations. Thanks, Greg. You. That means a lot. And shout out to the whole entire team. I know he's coming out. I'm so proud say. of you, Mike, for fucking reels, dude. Listen to it on the play. Thanks, Tim. And you're like, damn. <laughs> you did it, dude. Of course, thank you to you and Tim for believing in myself, Gary, Alana, and Paris all this time. And for the kind of funny community for allowing us into their homes and giving us a chance to talk Xbox. It has been awesome to be a part of the Xbox community. And it was a big deal, right? Like getting Phil on the show has always been the dream. Yeah. It has always been the goal. Of course, it was tough circumstances here, right? We planned this out way before any of the kind of Xbox drama ever happened. So we got to day of and it's like, oh man, we're going to have a tough one here with the big guy where that wasn't the goal. Right? So how we long had celebrate. this one been gestating? Because that's even as you're, you're one of your bosses or whatever. I know we had this conversation forever. Yeah. It's been a lot. Oh, we want to get him in the studio for the first time and mm -hmm. this, that, and the other. So when it finally popped up that it was happening on the calendar, again, like you said before, the CMA blocked it before Redfall reviews are out. I think even before we had the code, right? Yeah, we had this book yeah. or whatever. This like, was, yeah, before we got Redfall, before the CMA, right when we were during the week of the CMA blocking the announcement of, of course, Xbox and this Activision uh, acquisition. So, yeah, there was, hey, what are we going to talk about? Okay, it's probably going to be positive with Phil. We'll look forward to the summer and what's next. Of course, Red falls right on the horizon. So I don't think any of us came into the idea thinking, oh, we're going to have a hard conversation right now with him. Sure. 
And over here uh, in the Twitch chat, Evan something says, I'd have been shitting my pants, not going to lie. <laughs> That's what I'd like to talk to you about. I yeah. think, you know, you are in uh, the hot seat there, right? As you are the host, you're the first question out of the blo blocks. You're talking to Phil, who, of course, is a huge name in the industry, who is a internet friend of ours yours mm -hmm. right but i don't mean, have you have you talked to him in person like do you only once yeah, only see, once I, not, I want to so i'm trying to set the stage that yeah, it's not yeah. like this is like us fucking around with john drake on a bad day <laughs> right like this is phil who like we have a a fun relationship with but it's not a it's not a budding friendship where yeah. you're going fishing or whatever i've been there um a few times in my career right where you know usually what we do in video games is fun oh tell me about the thing tell me about this stuff what about that i've been there we have to ask the tough question mm -hmm. And I know that for me, Greg Miller, with a degree in journalism, uh, a lot, since the fourth grade knew he wanted to do this kind of stuff, yada, yada, yada. Even for me, when you're settling in and you're out the gate and you have to address the, the bad news head on, that's what I would say gets my heart going a little bit. Mm. Like, you know, not like where I'm going. What was that like for you, right? Like, again, you're, you're finally having mm. Phil on this show. You're yeah. finally getting to talk to him on camera about something. You're not this decade longs relationship with him <laughs> where was your head at to start that show uh all over the place greg truly and honestly i mean we had been we had a good flow and an idea of what we wanted last friday when we really locked in like hey he's gonna be here it's good to go i think me and Paris started to talk about like what is the flow always our x factor gary witt is going to be a part of that so you know we always planned for that and then when it came to day of the flow had been changed, right? The idea sure. of what we were going to look for, what we wanted to talk about had completely been altered. And, you know, I do have to give a big shout out to Andy who wrote me moments before. And he's like, just take a deep breath. And I remember I heard the music go and I was like, okay, breathe for a second. Cause I know I wanted to talk about it. And we had to talk of about course. it. Right. And so yeah, to get it out, of course, it feels like jumbled soup coming out of your mouth when you say it to him. Right. But it's yeah. like, Hey, let's talk about the, you know, possible block of this acquisition. Let's get into Redfall, right? And you want to articulate it the best you can, but he knows we're going to talk about it. So as long as I could alley-oop him, I knew he was going to come and at least deliver on what we wanted to hear. And, you know, in some of our eyes, it's what we wanted. We knew exactly what he was going to say, PR speak, right? But we also got a real deal Phil here, like a different 100%. Phil than I was expecting, right? I didn't think we were going to get grumpy Phil, as he said. And we got that the whole episode, and I think – him and the team took this one on the chin and they have a lot to answer for and they have a lot to win back the hearts and minds of Xbox gamers and the video game world, right? And we're going to talk about that today in this post show. Yeah, for sure. I think that was what was, well, I mean, if I, I was going to say not surprising, but the surprising thing for me again, and you guys called, uh, Gary gives them compliments, gives them the flowers yeah. on the show for it. But again, as an outsider and who's been do, somebody who's been doing this a long time, the fact they didn't cancel. Because again, like, mm -hmm. I want to, for the inside baseball of that, remember, we didn't announce that until yesterday. And it had been planned way before then. It was just like, oh, well, let's not do that. And then I think when they saw the Redfall stuff was coming, like, okay, well, let's not announce it. But announcing it, who gives a shit? Not canceling it. Yeah. Like, I, I will not name names. I have had the opposite experience in this industry where something is planned. Awesome. It's going to be great. Something bad happens. And those people, which is 100% they're right, that was not what they were coming on. I've talked about this on many of Greg Way, available on patreon.com slash kind of funny, right? That like so much of video games is marketing and PR, and you have a marketing and PR timeline. And so when you have a, they're going to come on to talk about this thing on this show, and right before it, something horrible happens that changes the message, you get that person out of that situation so they don't do it. But as Gary pointed out, not only did Phil do that yesterday, he showed up, he took it on the chin. And again, what I appreciate so much is, and it also breaks your heart because I watched it live and then I listened to it again in the car today is again, yeah, how defeated he is, but how much he's taking it on. Yeah. At no point did he pivot to the team. Did he pivot and, and dunk on Arcane? He was very much like this. These are my feelings. And like, there's people saying uh, fire fill. I understand that I'm going to say this, but you don't have to listen because I know we're not delivering it. None of this matters, especially the showcase until you get the controller in your hands and you're having fun. Like he said a bunch of really poignant things in there, but like hard things to say. And then definitely, I mean, again, I don't know Phil incredibly well, I've played Sea of Thieves with him. No big deal. But it was that thing of like, that was real. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think I, I was talking about this recently um, uh, with a bunch of different people, but stick with me. It's going to sound like I'm going to a more negative place, even though this is negative. Kevin Smith uh, just spent a month in a mental institution, right? And then he came out and he did this thing with people and he did a 35 minute presentation. You should all go watch uh, on YouTube, people's YouTube, right? And it's just him talking to the camera. And it's very much him talking about he had a break with reality because he lost his authentic self. He, you know, kind of like his on-air persona, like, hey, kids, I'm Kevin Smith. Like, 
he let that guy take control for too long. And when he turned around and tried to find himself, he couldn't find it anymore and kind of lost it. And he's like, I got to go. I got to go get help. And he thank God did everybody. If you're struggling with mental health issues, go get help. I'm not saying that Phil's losing touch with reality. I'm saying I've never seen Phil on camera be that real. And maybe I have. And it's just always been the positive Phil. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I talk about myself and people talk about me and Greg Miller as a presenter and a performer. And it's like, yes. Am I always presenting this hard and trying to hit say every word when I'm in the car with Bear to the ride home? No, of course not. But this is still me just dialed up, yeah. right? And so I think we see the real Phil dialed up in interviews and stuff and hanging out with him, but to see him dialed down in a bad place, like it it sounds like I'm complimenting him for being upset, but it is that thing of like I'm complimenting us on, on being able to share that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like a lot of yeah. people wouldn't share that with us. And I think that's what is special about Phil and what Xbox is trying to do. Yeah, definitely. I mean uh, I'm very thankful for Phil committing to this, right? Like they, like you said, they easily could have backed out and I wouldn't have batted an eye. I would have understood and would have kept the show going into the same conversation we were going to have, right? But the guy stepped up and had a real conversation with us. And I think we've all praised Phil during his tenure over at Xbox of being real, right? Yeah. Being honest and transparent with us or doing his best to do that as the head of a company, right? But he came on yesterday and it was impressive to see Oh, this is the real Phil, and he is not pleased with where this team is at right now and heading in to some big-time months, yeah. years of yeah. what Xbox needs to do to get a foothold back in the games industry. Well, let's start going through the news. We'll continue to obviously give you the inside baseball sides of it and talk some stuff here, but we'll start with number one. Uh, I already did. Did we already do the rope report jingle? We did. Yes, we did. Uh, Number one, Phil Spencer apologizes for disappointing Redfall and claims Xbox was expecting better reviews. This is Andy Robinson over at VGC. Xbox boss Phil Spencer has apologized for the launch state of its latest big first-party release, Redfall, and claimed that developer Arkane Austin will work on improvements for the game. The first major Xbox exclusive for Bethesda launched this week with a number of technical issues and has generally been reviewed poorly. Uh, Gaming aggregate scores of 62 Xbox Series X slash S and 58 on PC on Metacritic. Addressing Redfall's disappointing reception in a new interview with Kind of Funny Games, Microsoft's head of gaming claimed that plat- claimed the platform holder did not expect such a negative reception to the game, citing internal mock reviews which allegedly suggested it could have received much higher scores. Yeah, he was talking about being double digits. Yeah, that that was a very interesting moment there of like, you know, Gary asked him, hey, you know, you're a gigantic multi-million dollar company. You have people checking this game out beforehand. Did you not see this coming? And from what they expected, I think they thought higher of this game for sure. Uh, He also suggested that delaying the game further, it was originally due out in 2022, would not have solved its biggest issues. Quote, there's nothing more difficult for me than disappointing the Xbox community, Spencer said. I've been a part of it for a long time. I obviously work on Xbox. I'm head of the business. I have a lot of friends and get a lot of feedback. And just to kind of watch the community lose confidence, be disappointed. I'm disappointed. I'm upset with myself. We do mock reviews for game every game we launch, and this is double digits lower than where we thought we would be with the game, uh, with this game through those. That's one of the disappointing things. We would never strive to launch a game that we thought was going to review in the low 60s. It's not part of our goals. If you look at our review scores over the past year, and this is not a defense at all, which he said many a time when he was like yeah, trying to like, yeah, oh, yeah. I was like, hey, I'll still I'll eat shit. Don't worry, but this is how it is. I think the team, I think the teams have done a much better job in upping the level of quality of the games we've shipped, dot, dot, dot. And this game was significantly below our internal metrics compared to where it actually reviewed. But that's not obvious to anybody but us, and we have to own that, end quote. Yeah, I I like how real he got there. I mean, this clearly is not what they thought, but also the conversation has shifted, right, of like, why didn't you delay it, right? But this is a much larger problem than... 30 frames versus 60 frames. We talked about it in our review, and clearly everyone is seeing that. There was a core issue wrong with this game, and the team over at Xbox didn't identify that soon enough to really help fix the problem, right? He talked about, hey, we got there late. We brought in different teams from the coalition that were really, you know, good with what we can help provide on the engine side of things, but it was already too late to try to get that. That But there's a massive core issue with the game that's really needed to be addressed. And again, you know, is, is, you know, I think Gary obviously poignantly put it on this and Phil says he's going to steal it. Uh, The idea that, you know, there are, Failures aren't just failures. They aren't you failing. They're just something on the path to success, right? Failures are a part of success. And that was what was interesting is that, like, even though we're post-morting your show, your show was kind of a post-mort on Redfall in many yeah. ways. And one of the things Phil talked about, right, was 
when you go in on these acquisitions and Xbox buys a developer or buys a company that has a bunch of developers, there are projects that are already going and then there are projects that are in pre-production or early stages, right? And he cited the fact that Starfield was more early so they had more going on with that, whereas he said here Redfall was more further along, right? Mm -hmm. And that he wishes, you know, that he says we were probably or we were two hands off with it. Mm -hmm. By the time, you know, you don't worry about it as much because it's already going doing its thing and then you get there and then it should have been a, oh shoot, well how do we get it to 60 frames and this? And they poignantly said on the show right like well the conversation with the coalition uh uh, with rare right to get it to 60 frames like that should have started last fall and that didn't that started way later than that and that's why it's not there even though it's on a timeline now and blah 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 blah. like that i found to be a fascinating look behind the curtain of acquiring these studios and all right cool you're already on this project just make it for xbox just make it for pc we'll talk to you later about it and you come in like oh shoot there's issues here that we didn't know we couldn't see we couldn't figure out you know yeah, that's the big conversation I wish if we had more time, we would dive a little bit deeper into. Of course, acquiring Zenimax and Bethesda, right, has been a massive step forward for this team. But also we know that we're still in the early eight or early years of this acquisition, right? And the team early on said, we're going to let them operate independently, right? We're still over them. We're here to help. But like that, Todd and that team, they're going to market their games. They're going to work on their games. We're here, right? But clearly we've ne- now seen Maybe doing that isn't the way. Or, hey, we're still in the early stages of starting to bridge the gap and bring both of these teams together for more oversight and insight from each and every one, right? And so I think that was a major one there that I would like to dive deeper in is, was that a failure, right? Should you have from day one gone, everybody's underneath me, I'm looking at all of y'all no matter what, or is it, hey, we're still doing that right now, Mike. We're trying to start to bring that. And this one was already going on, you know? It was too late. It was another, you know salient point he made right of when these studios get bought and they get brought in and they're already working on a game expectations immediately go from okay cool whatever arcane austin is making some Mm -hmm. weird multiplayer vampire shooter to xbox has an exclusive vampire shooter you know what i mean like there is a this is a first party game this will be raged in the console wars etc 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 where it is an interesting thing that if xbox hadn't bought uh, is Max, right? And Redfall launches just like this. Who cares? Like, you know what I mean? I think we there would have been conversation about it. There would have been reviews about it, but it wouldn't have been this canary in the coal mine. Xbox is off the rails. Blah blah blah. Like it that. It would have just been the arcane fans who've like already been sold on like Dishonored and Prey, really only being the only ones talking about it. Well, um, I would have also argued that the yeah, you're right. That's there's that case of it, and they would have been mad that it's not Arcane or Prey, <laughs> or, uh, you know, Dishonored or Prey. Right. And that would have been their na- thing, and then there would have been new people coming in, like I don't understand what this is. People are like, oh no, well, uh, it's not what we liked them for. They yeah. should have done this. Blah blah blah. And of course, it's it's tough timing, right? Like yeah. we are now hitting the next phase of the true next generation becoming the current gen of. We're expecting seventy. 70- best and this is when they wanted to start shifting the tide to forza into starfield and beyond but of course you don't hit the mark on the first one and that's now we have a rough start to getting out of the gate early on here we have we're going to keep doubling down all these stories but i want to bring in the one the only nathan showcat who writes into kind of funny.com slash kfg just like you can it says what's good y'all so phil spencer apologized about redfall's disappointing or i'm sorry redfall disappointing xbox fans but i had a couple questions number one Is there a need for public apologies in this day and age? I feel like most reasonable people understand that when a game performs poorly in critical reviews, the devs and everyone involved aren't celebrating and are likely feeling really bad about the result of their hard work as well. Although Although an apology from Phil is very thoughtful, do you think it's necessary in cases like this? 100%. 1,000%. And the reason being is that the re- I've talked about this so many different times, and I always try to apply kind of funny logic to big cor- corporations, right? But it's the fact that when you are just the big corporation, you quickly become EA, you quickly become siloed off, you quickly become the most hated company in the world, you quickly become Ubisoft, and nobody knows what the fuck's going on. There's all this hor- like to humanize any of this is to speak to your audience. Well, no matter uh, the size of your business, I think if you want to be a successful business, you should treat it as much as you can like a small business and have that personal relationship with people. And so. I was shocked, and I and I and I said shocked very seriously and point. I am shocked to this day that Arcane Twitter accounts, Xbox, Phil's, uh, the the game itself of Redfall, nothing was said. 
publicly about any of this until Phil was on this show. When the, when that when the fucking show ended yesterday, and I came out here and was hugging you and telling you what a great job you did. My my question to them and then to you was like, is this exclusive? Like I don't understand. Is Phil doing the rounds right now? Is he about to have an X cast or a, a McCaffrey cast or whatever they call it? Uh, you know, are they going to do this? And like you're like, no, no. It's just the timing of how this worked out. It's like that's awesome for us, and I'm glad we can help. You know, be the platform for that speech. But like, I think like. Think about how fast Jedi Survivor had a statement up. Like, yo, yo, yeah, sorry, shit sucks, but here's what we're mm-hmm. doing to fix it. And granted, Redfall's problems, as Phil pointed out, aren't necessarily technical, right? And it was like, we could delay it, but the creative vision wasn't what we right. wanted or what they wanted. So what are you going to do with that? I'm still like, I'm surprised there hasn't been a mea culpa on the Redfall thing of like, we hear you, audience. This is what our plan is here. 60 frames will be out before August, you know, some kind of thing. But like, the fact that it's been all quiet on the Western Front, I think works against everyone in the situation. Uh, Nathan, you say, you know, most reasonable people understand that. Give me the one, Barrett. Most video game fans are not reasonable people. <laughs> I don't know. Have you looked at the comments on any any video or been part of the discourse? Like, that ain't happening. And so uh, for everything that Xbox's identity has been, they needed to say something. Phil needed to say something. This isn't a PlayStation who... I think, you know, can really, yeah, I was going to throw Destruction All-Stars under the bus there, but I guess there wasn't as much hype for that, and yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. there isn't a great analog for me right now with that, for them not, but I mean, even I guess when, like, the network went down, they, you know, I mean, like, you need to say something here. Yes, public apologies matter for what we do here, unless you want to just go be EA, and I, and I, like a lot of EA games, I'm not talking shit, but I mean, you want to just be, we are a corporate silo, we are a building. Yeah, I mean, in my mind, I'm, I think it goes both ways, right? Like, would we have gamers in the community? Of course, we're going to cry out about this. But in two weeks from now, would we have just moved on, right? And now this team coming out here having this conversation with us in an interview and now being all over the place, reignite the flame again, right? Now this is going to go on for another two weeks of conversation until June, really, where they can prove us wrong right but now. Don't but we, I, it's w- tough. If I'm Xbox, if I'm Bill, I want this conversation to be the one for the next two weeks, not or until June. Not the conversation to be didn't say anything. Yo, uh-huh. they fucked up Redfall, and yo, they fucked up Halo Infinite, and guess what? I they're gonna fuck up Starfield. They're gonna do this and like blah blah blah. blah, 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 blah. Like, why would I be excited for the showcase? Those people will still be there, but to come out and take it on the chin and be like, "We did. We're working on it." And for, Phil to even be like, "I know that like my words mean nothing. Mm-hmm. It's you having fun with the game. I know seventy dollars is seventy dollars. Like that goes so far to give confidence to people." I, I think, you know, the, the thing about it for me, right, is obviously I've covered PlayStation my entire career. I'm firmly entrenched in that as a, from a beat reporter perspective. That's why I feel like I stick around so much is that I host a PS I Love You show and yada, yada, yada. I still cheer for Xbox. I still love Phil. I still play my exclusives on Xbox. I played Redfall over there. I want Xbox to fucking crush. I want them to win. I want them to go. I want the dominoes to fall. And I think that if they went quiet right now and didn't say anything, I would not be like, it's over, but I would worry of like, that's really bizarre that they're not doing that when so far, you know, their hallmark has been, hey, I'm Phil and play games anywhere. Like, you know, we're trying, we're working, we're bringing these people in to do the vision. I found so much comfort isn't the right word, but it's the only word I got right now in the interview of him being like, I... We've been trying to do a big game a quarter, and I can see it right now. I can see it. Like I feel like we're. I feel like honestly, we're gonna look back in two years, and maybe even less, but probably maybe even more. You're gonna look back though and be like, "Man, that Redfall was a really shitty thing to happen right there." Because yes. I, I know I'm not even doing the domino analogy and the thing we've talked about. With that. I feel like we're about to turn the corner. The way he talked about being able to see it, the way he talked about we were in early with Starfield and we were able to, the way they're getting the projects out that they, these are already going. They're not ours, but we're going to get them out there because the teams love them. I feel like we're about to turn that corner. And if we can get it to one a quarter, we have one great Xbox game and maybe it's something as small as Hi-Fi Rush. Maybe it's something as big as Starfield. I think that's really going to be like, we look back like, oh man, Redfall was the last, like, kink. The Redfall might be the last kink, or it might have been the first domino, right? When we brought up the list of upcoming titles, Forza still doesn't have a date, but we know that's next up. And then Starfield was Redfall, that first domino of one a quarter, where we would then flow into Forza, into Redfall, Hellblade 2, go on to Avowed, and we continue on, right? Like, is this going to be the one? And having that 
possibly be the first one at a major misstep really makes you reset the dominoes, unfortunately, which is too bad for them. Nathan's other question here is about the review score stuff, too. Uh, Phil also mentioned that internal mock review scores double digits higher. Or, I'm sorry. Internal mock reviews scored double digits higher than where the actual aggregate sites like Metacritic and OpenCritic landed. So in your eyes, how does that process go? Too much bias on the part of internal reviewers or potentially overlooking certain aspects of the game, which they maybe assumed would be polished before release. Sorry, minimal word. That might be it, Greg. I, I mean, this scored in the 60s, right? And I think some people could find that as a fine time in the sevens. Maybe they were looking at low 70s, right? Yeah. Then maybe that's, that's what they accurate, thought yeah. where they were, right? Minecraft Legends just released. That was in the 70s. Maybe they thought they had just a middle-of-the-road game with this one, and they thought they were just going to drop it, get through, get by, right? And I think it did go poorly, and it was fundamentally wrong, right? When we talk about not the bugs, not the technical side, but the mission structure, the game itself – it's just not there, right? You had the idea. This beautiful open world was realized, right? Yeah. There was some cool concepts to it. But when we talk about the missions, you brought it up during our review, the fetch quest, right? All it was was fetch quest. Every safe house was the exact same two missions every time. You had these awesome vampire god bosses that just turned out to be very generic boss fights, right? But in the reviewer's eyes, maybe they found fun in that or maybe they didn't give the real deal on that. I think, you know... We'll never know because they won't be made public because they never are or anything like that. I think one of the things, Nathan, I want to make sure that we're being clear about and that I listened to the interview and I, I think it's, I think he even mentioned one of the PR, the companies that does mock mm. reviews, right? Internal reviews isn't like, and I shouldn't say isn't, isn't necessarily, hey, I'm Joe Blow from Xbox and I'm like, I'm Major Nelson and I'm playing this and I'm writing a review about it, which I don't think Major Nelson does, but just, you know, Xbox employee internal reviews often are you hire an outside company a person comes in a freelancer does it they review it they give it to you and that never sees the light of day yada 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 so i don't want it to be like well this xbox is reviewing their own games and they can't tell if they're good or bad from my experience talking to people who do mock reviews because a lot of our uh, gaming press friends who would get laid off or move their careers or do whatever would end up doing that sometimes freelance would end up doing that uh, as a company or whatever it's you have to understand even though you might think wow Redfall shipped as an incomplete game. The build these people are reviewing off of are, is so much more incomplete of animatic cutscenes, this, that, the other, things that jump you ahead, do this. Um, I, it wasn't a review build, but I had the full build of Ghostbusters, the video game, long I, I, for a debug P PlayStation 3 because I knew I was such a fan. I don't think it was for a preview. I think it might have just been because they were like, we'd love, to, we'd love you to play it earlier. Or maybe it was a preview. I guess I wouldn't have... I wouldn't have done feedback. Whatever. I had a thing, and it got to a point where you're playing, 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 and then it was like text on a screen of like, the Ghostbusters do this, and then this happens, then you get ported. Like, that's how loose some of these game builds are, depending on when you get to, when a mock reviewer would mock review them, right? And so, I think you have to give benefit of the doubt so many times there. It's something I talked about with uh, both our uh, Survivor review for Jedi and the industries at large, is that I was um, heartened to see reviewers not give the benefit of the doubt to, oh, well, there's a day zero patch. Mm. So I won't mention the litany of bugs I had because they said they're going to fix them. We can't do that anymore. But mock reviews are, okay, well, yeah, I'm playing a very incomplete of the game. So is this actually a bug or is this something you're already working on? This isn't blah, 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 blah. I think there's that part of it. And then to step even further back, it's just the fact that I'm going to say Dead Island's three out of five. Mike's going to say it's a two out of five. Like yep. different people I, are different people. I gave Red Ball three out of five. I thought it was an okay video game, right? So I'm five. right there in that 70 category, right? So they're looking at someone like me who's like, oh, he said it's a fine game. He gave it a 71, right? So now we're expecting that. But then the rest of the crew was like, no, actually, we didn't really like this game or vibe with it. Well, I apologize. I accept your apology for being wrong Thank about you. Dead Thank Island, you. too. Oh, yes. You know yes, I mean? yes. I went back and forth for a long time on that. Now I know I'm right. <laughs> Number two, as we continue on this Phil Spencer X cast litany of stories xbox did a better job with assisting starfield development than redfall this is matt perslow over at ign xbox boss phil spencer has offered some kind of reassurance to fans that starfield will hopefully launch in a better state than this week's xbox console exclusive redfall mm -hmm. claiming that the publisher quote did a better job end quote in terms of assisting on development Discussing the development of Redfall in a new episode of the Kind of Funny X-Cast, Spencer explained how acquisition of a studio that is midway through the development of a game, as he did with both Bethesda Game Studios and Arcane Austin, working on Starfield and Redfall respectively, can be a challenge, and that Xbox need to, needs to improve its process. 
Quote, when we acquire studios, uh, we there are games that are in development, and then there's things that are either really early in development or not even conceived yet. I think we need to improve in engaging with games that are midway through production when they become part of Xbox. Xbox. We didn't do a good job early on of on engaging Arcane Austin to really help them understand what it meant to be part of Xbox and part of first party and use some of our internal resources to help them move along that journey even faster. We left them to work on the game. According to Spencer, Xbox did a better job with Starfield because the game was earlier on in production. Uh, when Bethesda joined Microsoft, Redfall was further along in development, and so assistance was more difficult. Uh, nonetheless, Spencer says, quote, We should have been there for Arcane Studio director Harvey Smith and the team earlier. I think that's on us. And uh, then through the process. It's an Unreal game. We have a bunch of studios that have done uh, some really great work on Unreal over the years. And I think we were too late to help in that when they had certain issues. Yeah, this is what we talk about with failing forward, right? Yeah. Learning from your mistakes here. Of course, you come in with a very talented team over at Arcane, right? Arcane Austin, known for their games. I'm sure they looked at it and said, hey, great. You're working on a game. Get to it. We'll talk to you whenever you need us. Instead of, hey, you're part of the umbrella now. We have so many ways for us to help you. Is there anything that we can do? How do we get involved, right, earlier yeah. on in that? And I think the big one here when we talk about failing forward is with this massive acquisition going down between Activision Blizzard King and this group here, now you need to prove to us with your first acquisition that you can do things right, right? And so I know uh, Bethesda, we're already years into it. Maybe we're getting past that phase of, Hey, most of these teams are already working on things. Wasn't our bad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you got to prove to us on this next time around, hey, we're going to do much better. And the learning, it starts with Bethesda. Clearly, it didn't go as planned. As you know, Mike, I uh, uh, consider myself a good interviewer. Right? And I say, say that because I've been talked to a few times by a few different dozen people saying I, I'm good at talking to people oh, nice. and doing stuff. You know what I mean? And I was go as I mentioned earlier in the thing, the journalism thing, and yada, yada, yada. And I think it makes me good. For me, I think there's always the the hallmark of a good interviewer uh, is asking the question that's on the audience's mind at the mm. time. And my example always, 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 always is Aaron Andrews. If you remember, it was after uh, Seahawks 49ers playoff game, right? Crabtree and Richard Sherman got in a dust up. She was interviewing um, um, Crabtree, Richard Sherman. She was interviewing Richard Sherman. And he was on another one <laughs> where he was so mad. He's like, you want to cover my legs? Don't cover my legs. Yeah. he was. And, and I'm on a plane watching this and I go, who is he talking about? And Aaron Andrews goes, who are you talking about? And he goes, Crabtree. And I was like, I was like, wow, Aaron Andrews just fucking crushed it. You did the hallmark of a great reporter yeah. where I didn't even think about the question. You were talking about all the stuff going back and forth, blah, blah, blah. And you immediately pivoted and spiked the ball back at Phil, not in an aggressive way, but it was, we know 30 and 60 is important. You're going to say this about Starfield now. You're, you're, we're going to have a message about Starfield. And he said, yeah. And I was like, damn, if I would have been in your seat, I never would have thought to ask that. I never would have thought to ask that. And I Thanks, think that, Greg. You know, you, both, or I should say all three of you were on point for this interview. You know, I thought even Gary, because even when you, when you introduced Gary, it is, he did a whole rant about Juvie. I was like, <laughs> glad this is still Gary Witta. Uh, but all three of you had great, insightful questions. You know, Paris did such a great job of like, hey, we're saying all this stuff, but to look back, the 12 months thing, right? And he tried to soften it too, where he's like, I forgot what it was, like, arguably, and Phil's uh -huh. like, no, no, there's no argument. Uh, we didn't I, do it. I <laughs> we him we for didn't that do one. it. I was right. like, fuck, yeah. Like, this is another great example of you, and I'm surprised I didn't get called out here, of like you being like, yo. This is a fun show, and we love Xbox, but are you learning, and are you, in this very specific case, going to say a frame rate for this game and nail it? Uh, thanks, Greg. I appreciate that. And yeah, I think that's one of those of me learning, interviewing, and my style, right, of do I look at Phil and go, hey, you want to tell me right now, is this going to be 30 or 60? Or, hey, when it is the time and the place, are you and Todd going to show me and the Xbox fans what we want? Because this conversation came up long before Redfall. This happened last summer when we first saw Starfield and people questioned, man, is Bethesda going to come out with another buggy mess? Is Bethesda going to come out with a next-gen title that's going to hit the frame rates that the players want? And this has been on our minds. Like you said, right? Asking what the people want. I've known that we all want to know where Starfield's going to fall. And I've said it before, Starfield must be a game of the generation. And now yeah. there's even more pressure on huh? Starfield to deliver and pretty much save this year for Xbox, right? Because it has been a tough year. It's been a tough two years if we really want to go back to it. But, uh, I mean, another one, I, I think it was, 
hey, Phil, just tell me, are we going to get this clear as day? Right? Like, that's all I want to know. Yeah. I'll let you and the team announce the way you want to be. But I didn't know if I was supposed to look at it and be like, say it right now here. You know what I mean? I When I talked to you after it, I did mention that to you. And uh -huh. you, you made the point of like, and I wasn't aggressive about yeah, yeah. it. I, I was like, oh, man, I, I you would have gotten that answer of like, well, we're doing a Starfield direct. Yes. We're going to talk about Starfield. That's not what today's about. And so I think you did it the right way and got the right information out of it. Yeah, I mean, it's something to look forward to. We all have that on our minds. And yeah, you would learn from your mistakes. And I can guarantee you that I'm sure, like Phil answered, right, they're going to clear as day, come out and say, this has 60 frames per second on this setting, or, hey, we're at 30 frames. Like, they're going to have to break that news because it's on every gamer's mind right now. Uh, it's going real fast in the chat because you're all being so supportive and we love you for that. Remember, of course, we'll be doing super chat Q&A at the end of this episode. Uh, but Parks went by with a question that's very much like Nanos. So I'm going to write, Nano wrote in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD, just like you can to be part of the show and says, hi, y'all, or hey, y'all. With all the talk about Redfall, Redfall, why is the number one point that Xbox is a failure? During XCast today, many of Xbox's games were covered and are showing that Xbox has been low-key firing on most cylinders with Redfall feeling like a misstep. Just since last December, we've gotten Pentiment, Hi-Fi Rush, Grounded 1.0, Minecraft Legends, and Age of Empires 2 DLC, which were all received quite well. Is the issue Xbox's major hits are coming from more niche games? Why is one, albeit big, misfire in the past year from Xbox being dragged through the streets more than any other company? I mean, you and I have talked about it for quite some time. I think it's the Xbox community and fans looking for the major AAA title, right? We have been pleased with the passion projects. They have shown that they are giving the time and the creativity to all the studios that they have, and we've celebrated those games, right? But none of them fill in the gaps that we're looking for when it comes to major AAA titles. Why are you buying this console as the exclusive machine, right? Right now, you can look over on the other side, you can look anywhere and go, I can play 90% of these games anywhere else and now with Game Pass with what they're really doing, right? And I'm sure we'll get into that in a little bit of consoles, right? Their goal now is just to get you anywhere you're at. Yeah. So how are you selling me on getting the most powerful console? What is the reasoning, right? And so uh, in my opinion, I talked about it last summer, right? I wasn't impressed with this year. I'm glad that Phil thinks it was a solid start to the year, right? Age was great. Hi-Fi Rush was good, right? I didn't find the love in Minecraft Legends. I think that was a very niche move there to choose that over like a Dungeons that was more widespread of sure. more people could adapt onto that. But I think they are still missing the mark on the games that they need to deliver. Yeah, uh, you nail it. I mean, I can double down and, and say more of the same thing. But yeah, it's the fact that, as I've said many times, uh, citing our own reviews or metrics or whatever and stick with me because it's going to sound way worse than it is because you i remember everybody unless you're new here hey i'm greg and i fucking love indies and i love weird shit and i love a teenage girl's narrative making me cry yes <laughs> the overwhelming majority of gamers do not care about indie titles they do not play them they do not move the needle and so when you go to pentiment hi-fi rush grounded 1.0 uh minecraft legends age of empires 2 yes these are all too niche Xbox fans, like you're saying, were sold that this is the most powerful console on the market. Mm -hmm. We have all these first parties, which immediately meant not that even put aside the console wars of it. I think so, so many people that spoke as we are finally going to get something exclusively that is on par with what PlayStation is doing with their first party studios, mm -hmm. with The Last of Us, with Ghost, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. As you talk about banger and banger and banger and, you know, God of War and Game of the Year and narrative and this stuff, the other. Whereas these games, which are way smaller, often on other platforms, you know, all these other things just doesn't speak that way to it. You know what I mean? It's back to the PC gaming argument of like, PC's got everything, so it's awesome. But it's like, well, does it have this thing or that thing and the easy use and blah, blah, blah. It's like back to it of like, you're trying to talk about like, even if it's not a console war, if it is just that you have a lineage with Xbox, a lineage with PlayStation, you want cool shit on there, right? You want to make a yeah. part of it and you want to be mainstream. The Xbox console being on sale in Walmart is mainstream. So people buy that. Maybe they just want Madden. Maybe they just want Assassin's Creed, but they want those big mainstream titles, those big AAA titles. And we've been sold on that, Greg. That's the issue that we have, again, is showing too early and then not talking about them for years to come, right? Yeah. We were sold on, of course... Halo, Gears, and Forza, those have been the mainstays, but you purchase ZeniMax and Bethesda. Now we go, oh my God, machine games, id software, Bethesda, they're going to make all these games, right? Where is the next Wolfenstein? Where is the next Doom that is supposed to come over onto this team or elevate just the games that we've gotten before, right? And we yeah. haven't seen that yet. We've been sold on the pipe dream that is 
fable, avowed, perfect, dark, ever wild, right? But we still don't know where, what they are, when they're dated, what they look like, right? We've seen yeah. CGI trailers of many of these games, but we've never seen gameplay. We just continue to stay in this waiting cycle. And I think that's the issue is you talk about celebrating the games that we have. That's great. But we have been sold on games that we should have or should be having. And we still are waiting for them years later on why I spent $500 on a brand new console, right? Of yeah. Three years ago, we were sold on this dream. We haven't hit that in three years since this console has come out. And that's been a long time to speak of when you could easily go buy a PlayStation. And over those course of three years, they've had way better exclusive, way bigger AAA titles hit that thing that I should be playing over here. Ladies and gentlemen, today's a banner day for Kind of Funny because Mike and his team killed it and crushed it and had an amazing interview and we're getting shared all around. But remember, uh, tomorrow... We'll be back to the normal views. We'll be back to just making content for you. And the people we make the content for are mainly over on patreon.com slash kind of funny. You keep the lights and mics on. You let the 11 of us live our dream each and every day. You've made this amazing spare bedroom studio a reality. And we can't thank you enough. Of course, over on patreon.com slash kind of funny, you can get dozens of exclusive episodes, exclusive merch. You can watch us record the podcast like PS I love you XOXO live this afternoon later. But right now, the most important thing is you could go there to get this show ad free. But since you're not there, Here's a word from our sponsor. Shout out to Honey for sponsoring this episode. Honey is the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. And we all know there's nothing better than the feeling of saving money. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Here's how it works. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds as the Honey guy dances it searches for coupons it can find for the site. And if it finds a working coupon, you will watch the prices drop. We here at Kind of Funny have been using Honey for years, and it has literally saved us thousands on tech, costumes, food, you name it. Honestly, I just love how easy it is to set, forget, and save. Honey doesn't just work on desktops. It also works on your iPhone. You just activate it on Safari on your phone, save on the go. And if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. By getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. You can get PayPal Honey for free, at joinhoney.com slash kind of funny. That's joinhoney.com slash kind of funny. Shout out to Rocket Money for sponsoring this episode. We all love gobbling up content and we have an understanding of what subscriptions we use. Or do we? Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost? Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions when the actual total is closer to $200. That's right. You, you. You out there, you could be wasting hundreds of dollars each month on subscriptions you don't even know about. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and it helps you lower your bills all in one place. Rocket Money has saved some of us here at Kind of Funny a ton of money and it can help you too. Stop throwing away your money. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash kinda funny. That's rocketmoney.com slash kinda funny. R-O-C-K-E-T-M-O-N-E-Y.com slash kinda funny. Number three on the Roper Report, Microsoft's Xbox chief thinks losing the Xbox One generation was, quote, the worst generation to lose. This is Tom Warren at The Verge. It's been a rough couple of weeks for Xbox that's had fans questioning the state of Microsoft's console gaming business. First, there was the news of a 30% drop in Xbox hardware revenue, followed by the CMA's decision to block Microsoft's giant $68.7 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard, uh, and topped off by Redfall launching earlier this week to a very lukewarm reception. When you combine all of this with a quiet year of Xbox releases in 2022, Xbox fans are wondering when Microsoft is going to deliver a slew of AAA games like we saw with the Xbox 360 generation. Quote, we're not in the business of out consoling Sony or out consoling Nintendo, says Xbox chief Phil Spencer in, in an interview with Kind of Funny Games. He continues, quote, I see the commentary that if you just build great games, everything will turn around. It's just not true that if, if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift in some dramatic way. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation where everybody built their digital library of games. We want our Xbox community to feel awesome, 
But this idea that if we just focused more on great games on our console, that somehow people are going to win the console race doesn't really lay into what people into the reality of most people. There is no world where Starfield is an 11 out of 10 and people start selling their PS5s. That's not going to happen, end quote. Greg, this was a wild moment. This was one of those moments. Where there I was, was like, this, and then when he, he said they were third place. Yes. And yes. I was like, damn. That was a, a wild one because, like, it's so true, and it's, it's eye-opening to think about because I've never thought about that. But, yeah, when I started, when we all started building our digital library was during that age right there. And that's where you kind of cemented yourself because, perfect example, now I have hundreds of games that I have purchased with my hard-earned money over on the Xbox platform. It is very difficult, the idea of thinking, I'm going to throw all that away or move on to something different and leave those behind, right? We're in this new age where things are being carried with you. You own them now. And it's not as simple as just take this and put it in the game disc anymore. It is, oh, that is mine, and I own that. And carrying it over, they lost that generation massively. And now we're here where it's like, oh, yeah, that you're way far behind now, which is tough to think about. Yeah, you know, he talked to... Uh around these quotes a lot that I enjoyed where he was talking about, yeah, the, you know, the days of, you know, buying the new console and starting fresh, like with your SNES or Genesis or whatever are gone, right? There was also the point of like, you know, he's talking about the fact that games like Fortnite and Roblox, you know, they continue on from last generation. So even that it is, okay, cool, you're backlogs there is whatever the law it is also this thing of just sticking with the same experiences and the same things and like, yeah. of course as we've gotten used to a you know playstation 4 pro you know these iterative consoles even the ps5 even the xbox series x like they're just iterations on what you already had as you expand the platform and i thought it was uh, uh fascinating to hear let alone directly call out right the fact that it was like oh yeah this was the worst generation to lose. I was like, damn, yeah, I guess I never thought of it that way in terms of like it was everybody was starting to go. And again, you talk about the different in me the difference in messaging of PlayStation 4 versus Xbox One at launch there, right? And it was the PS4, here's how you share games, used games, yada, yada, mm -hmm. yada. And that won a lot of people and a lot of mind sharing got them to a specific spot. Yeah, it was a, that was a very wild quote, especially because that came off the back of, hey, a lot of the Xbox console uh, best friends out there and community are feeling like second rate citizens, right? They feel like you have moved on to an ecosystem where PC is at the forefront, cloud gaming. And do we still have faith that you want to continue to make these consoles, right? Why am I still here? Yeah. If I could be worried that you could say, Hey, we're not in the console market anymore. You can just play the game off the television. <clears> right. <throat> and so now you start to worry, uh, what are we still doing here? Right. And they lost the biggest generation, like you said, because now when you look at it, I could still have my PlayStation with that big library. I'll give you $15 a month and I'll just play on my television through the cloud if I want to play some sort of exclusive. Yeah. What's the reason for doing this? Yeah. Paris Lily has joined my co-host on the Kind of Funny X cast. I know he wants to chime in you guys are, on all the it's, fun. It's like you guys just won the championship last night and now you're back at school. You're all back at school <laughs> coming into your, your varsity jackets. Paris, great work yesterday. Oh, thank you. And hearing what you're just saying right now, I, I think that was the one thing that I wish we had more time to follow up on, because I even had it written down that I hear a lot of people think that the console player is now second class citizen for Xbox and they're moving on to cloud and PC and, you know, these these other handheld devices. It's no longer about the console. Clearly, that's not the case. We know that's not the case. There's no way they're abandoning what is their, their biggest market. And I think Phil was just being honest when he talked about, look, I don't. If, if Starfield could be an 11 out of 10, and that's not going to allow them to catch up with PlayStation in this generation because they did so much damage in the past generation, and that was the start of the digital age to everything that Mike was just talking about as far as if I already have so many of my games invested in this ecosystem, I'm not going to abandon that anytime soon. And I think, I forget who said this on Twitter, I saw it this morning, but the whole point that Microsoft, that Xbox needs to do don't worry about the competition. Don't worry about how many hardware sales that they have right now. Make great games. Yeah. Period. Point blank. That I mean, it, it's that simple. Make great games. Starfield be great. Hellblade two be great. Avowed be great. Fable be great. Perfect Dark be great. If you get because here's the difference between Xbox and, and PlayStation right now. PlayStation has been consistent since about 2014 with their titles, where I know every year I can expect something pretty darn good from PlayStation. Xbox has not done that. And we thought this was the generation that was going to start doing that. And here we are three years in and we got Redfall. Can't do that. 
you you cannot say here's here's the the, the starting point of us charging you seventy dollars for our next gen only games, and we give you Redfall. They would have been better off delaying that game to 2024 versus putting it out right now. They'd have been better off taking the heat of another delay and having Starfield, assuming it's great, be the first great next gen only seventy dollar game for them versus it being Redfall. Because now we got the podcast that we got yesterday where instead of us having a fun conversation about Xbox and its future, we had to talk about the mistakes of what Redfall was. And that's just unfortunate. 100%. Paris, I want you to stick around because story number four quotes you. Number four on the Roper Report. Xbox didn't deliver on 2022 showcase, but Phil Spencer is enthusiastic about this year's. This is Chris Scullion of VGC. Xbox boss Phil Spencer has stated that the company failed to deliver on what it showed during last year's showcase presentation, but says he's, quote, very enthusiastic about this year's show. Speaking to Kind of Funny Games' Xcast podcast, Spencer was asked by Paris Lilly about the previous Xbox showcase, which took place in June 2022. Quote, last year during the showcase, you had the 12-month plan, Lilly said. You didn't necessarily deliver on all the games. Then interrupts. <laughs> no, we didn't deliver. Phil interrupts. Uh, there is no necessarily. We didn't deliver. Uh, Spencer was then given a list of upcoming games that Lily said players still didn't know much about, despite having been announced long ago, including Avow- Avowed, Perfect Dark, Everwild, Fable, State of Decay 3, and Contraband. Going on to discuss this year's showcase, Spencer said, quote, I'm not going to try to oversell showcase here because if I was on the other side watching this, it's like, Hey, after Redfall, I'm going to put my hands on the controller and that's what's going to take what it's going to take to prove to me. But that's not what showcase is. So I'm very enthusiastic about showcase. We're going to announce some things, uh, things that people haven't seen uh, some new games and we're going to give updates to some things uh, that were on your list. Phil added, The other thing that gets me really excited is when I look forward over the next quarters, which has always been my focus. How do we have a big game out every quarter at quality? Uh, That things are lining up finally after some of the slowdown through COVID. Tired of talking about that, but I can now see that we've got games coming every quarter that I think will surprise and delight our customers. We still have to deliver on the creative. We still have to deliver on the technical. Not every game we ship is for everybody. We know that. I'm I'm not trying to build the one game to rule them all. We will have different creative takes, and we have a very diverse portfolio. When you think about the stuff Microsoft Game Studios builds, and I like that, I think for what we're trying to do as Xbox, uh, which isn't mimic any of the other platforms out there, is to create our own brand and identify the diversity of what we build, which hopefully will end up being a strength. But we have to do it at quality. We have to do it on time, and we have to show people uh, what what they're actually going to see. We have to show gameplay, and I think I'm kind of beyond that. Uh, we have to put great games in the hands of our players. There's nothing else, end quote. Paris, a great question from you and a great line of uh, topic there. And I know, again, I talked to Mike earlier in the show. I don't know if you got to ca- catch it because you have a real job, but yeah, again. Yeah, I, was, I was doing my real job of pr- uh, giving a presentation to the entire company. I know that pit in your stomach when you want to ask a serious question on a, uh, to a, somebody who's not in a great mood and anything else. You did a great job of delivering this. No, I I appreciate that. And that actually was one of the more important questions that I wanted to ask him. I had written down because that's been the common theme throughout the Xbox community. When are you going to start delivering? And again, kudos to you when you had Matt Booty on, because it was on kind of funny where Matt Booty said, we want to give you game every quarter. And then Phil obviously repeated that. And obviously they need to stick to it. And, and a part of my question was, and I think it was a follow-up to what he said is Forget Activision. You have 20 something studios at this point, and we know so little about what they're doing when we can expect these games. You you did this great announcement in 2020 of all these games, which hey, we all loved, but here we are three years later. I still don't know what the hell Everwild is. What is it? I don't know. And they got to start answering those kind of questions. Even if the game is still two, three years out, that's fine. Start giving us updates to them. Start communicating more. And to the point that I also made to them, I thought in 2021 they did a fantastic job with that. I thought Xbox was really on it in 2021 with communicating and and kind of showing a roadmap. If you think about what they've done this generation, 2021 was their best year. You had Psychonauts 2, Force Horizon 5 as examples, right? Sure. We got to get back to that. We got to get back to that plus. We got to hit that. 
rotation of games that they're talking about. We got to start seeing that stuff from Xbox. And to Phil's point, they got to come in quality. They just have to. And it's not like even Starfield, as an example, Starfield is not going to be for everybody. That's okay. But Starfield still needs to be from a technical standpoint, from a quality standpoint, top tier. It just It just has to be. Anything less than that, what the hell are we doing? You know, and I think they obviously understand that. And I think the the good thing that's going to come out of this whole Redfall scenario is it's going to make them look internally and audit their own processes 100%. to make them better. 100%. That's what's going to happen. And that's a good thing for us as gamers, because I do think, and I know I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but I do think the past few years, we've seen so many games come out either feature incomplete, techno, tech-wise incomplete. There's issues with it. I'm tired of that. Don't ship it. We couldn't do that back in 1990 with Mario 3. Mario 3 had to be good and ready to go. So why are we doing that now? And I understand it's more complicated now, but still, delay it if you have to. But these games cannot continue to ship this way. It's just, it's unacceptable. Excuse me, it's unacceptable, especially the amount of money that we're spending. Yeah. Agreed. And we've talked about the showcase. This is another major one, and it's wild. Every year we come to this saying, this is the one. This is a major one that can't make us wait any longer. And I think... Xbox over these past four plus years have now really listened to the community and taken that, right? It was, yeah. hey, we're sick of you showing and not telling. Hey, we're sick of CGI trailers. And then they finally got to the point of, all right, hey, we're going to show you gameplay. We want to do this 12-month roadmap. It didn't work, right? And I go back to Phil of like, we can do this showcase. I can promise you the world. But until you get that controller in your hand, have we done our job yet, right? And I think still in June, we have another issue where I don't have a controller in my hand. Right? Yeah. That's my problem yeah. here yeah. is we're going to see these games, and all I still know is Forza and, of course, Starfield at the end of the year. Is there something more to fill out this year? Is there something right now for Xbox gamers to get excited about? Because yeah. if not, it's going to be another one where it's, hey, here's Fable gameplay finally, but that's 2024, 2025. And I go, oh, I'm still left waiting. And I think that's going to be the biggest uphill battle that they have to do here in June. And I think it still won't be enough for the Xbox community, unfortunately. You know what needs to happen? And, and in a weird way, this is kind of important. Think about the Game Awards last year. They didn't have anything to show. I want, I want them to have things to show at the Game Awards. I want them to be proud and excited to show off this new thing with, with Jeff Keighley at the Game Awards because that would mean we got Starfield, which came in great. We got Forza, which came in great. Assuming Hellblade 2 is the other thing that's going to drop this year, it comes in great. Then, hey, here's what we're getting in early 2024 from Xbox. Start hitting that consistent rotation of games. No one's complaining. End of the day, you give us great games, none of this is happening. We're all We're all... We're playing. We're playing games. We're having fun. We're not sitting here talking about technical issues and quality control. And man, when are they going to talk about this game again? Instead, you're playing games because you're consistently getting them. And Phil clearly knows that because that's why he said what he said yesterday. It's, it's that simple. I mean, we obviously do an Xbox podcast. I'm obviously a huge fan of Xbox and everything that they're trying to do. But now we're at a point that they have to deliver it. I mean, it's as simple as that. And I want to build off of what Paris said. This team is finding a good rhythm, right? Like, we need to celebrate the developer direct. Of course, the Xbox wire is always bumping with all the news, right? Pumped. This team is starting to figure out how do we get in front of the messaging? How do we keep our players informed? And Paris is right. Like, we're just missing that one extra piece, right? There's something in there that we can deliver on and keep people informed and keep them satisfied until the next one, right? And that sure. line of dominoes is starting to line up. It needs to be pushed. It needs to deliver that one per quarter. But like, we're just missing one extra piece on the communication side, in my opinion, that should be there. Developer Direct, nice touch right there. Big June Showcase, always a fun time, right? Xbox Wire, you're doing your thing on the blog. What is that one more thing? And I think it is someone going around, seeing these developers, having a 15-minute interview, showing us behind the curtain, right? People get geeked up and excited about that. Hey, this is where we're at right now with Fable. We're showing this off. Pull it back cool. even further. Pull it's the curtain just even further. something, right? We yeah. had that with Inside Xbox. You need Xbox. a goodwill tour. That's what you're talking mm -hmm. about, right? Because, again, if these games aren't going to be ready right away, which they're not going to be yeah. because that's not how games work, the problem is you've burned uh, goodwill so far. And all the words and all that stuff can be fine, but if it is just more teaser trailers with nothing on it, mm -hmm. you have to work that message. That isn't That doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. Paris, you did great work. Thank you so much for joining us and popping in today.
All right, thank you. I'm Thanks, glad I Paris. Caught it at the back end. Talk to you soon. Anytime. Everybody, go listen to the Xcast, of course. Uh, fifth story, of course, is Phil Spencer reacting to the UK blocking the Activision uh, mm. Microsoft deal uh, and discussing next steps. We had Eddie's st- spot, game spot story here, but we kind of talked about it already, and we're late in the show. So I will just encourage you to go listen to the Xcast. Yeah, uh, a very interesting one. You can tell he is, of course, frustrated and down on that when they worked very hard to battle the Call of Duty this, Call of Duty that, and that was the cloud. That was the one, and then they hit him with the cloud and you could hear right like this is still a very new area of gaming and tech and they are one of the people at the forefront and they feel like they were really hit hard by this of saying oh you're going to monopolize this or take it over when no one's really in this field yet you can hear it in his voice he's not pleased with that so good for them for continuing to fight that and we'll see how much longer that lasts i mean we're 18 months into that that's wild. It's a to big think about, deal. Craig. It's a big acquisition. That's crazy. But yeah, for the UK to be up, uh, bent out of shape about the cloud stuff, and him to be like, "Well, they're mad," and a thing that doesn't even exist yet. Mm-hmm. I imagine their appeal they'll be able to win out on. But we will wait and see. Number six and final on the rope report for your Thursday is not from Kind of Funny Xcast. Uh, Unity lays off 600 more employees, closing half of its offices. This is Brendan Sinclair over at GamesIndustry.biz. Unity is cutting another 600 employees from in its third round of layoffs in less than a year, the Wall Street Journal reported today. The cuts equal about 8% of the company's headcount and will leave it with roughly 7,000 employees worldwide. Additionally, Unity is looking to reduce its physical footprint, cutting down its current 58 offices worldwide to fewer than 30 over the coming years. Quote, it's all about setting ourselves up for higher growth, Unity CEO John Riccatello told the outlet, saying the cuts will look to reduce the number of middle management layers in the organization. That's too bad. But don't worry, it's not a recession. Just economic headwinds really making their way through here and making some bold changes. We will continue to watch as Unity does their thing. And, of course, as layoffs continue to affect video games and gaming-adjacent industries. But the next economic headwind is so far away, Mike. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the mom and grop shops. Where would I go? Greg, I would point you in the direction of the upcoming games and software listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show host each and every weekday. Raven Lock is out on all the Xboxes and PC. Mm-hmm. Rejected is rejected. Rivals Early Access is on PC. Space Gladiators is on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Bare Butt Boxing Early Access is on PC. Kaku Ancient Seal is on Early Access on PC. Mia and the Dragon Princess is on everything, including mobile. Uh, Propagation Paradise Hotel is on PC and MetaQuest. And then the Dark Pictures Anthology, Man of Medan, uh, is on Switch. They put the worst one on. That Switch. was unfortunately the worst one out of them. Yeah. New dates for you. Uh, Crime and Mercenary Tales delivers comic book styled adventure to MetaQuest 2 and Pico on May 25th. Fall of Porcupine comes June 15th for all the Xboxes, all the PlayStation, Switch, and PC. The Tartarus Key launches May 31st for all the Xboxes, PS4, and Switch, and PC. Then deals of the day for you. Apple Arcade adds 20 new games with four new originals. What the Car, TMNT, Splintered Fate, Disney Spielstruck. Is that speed struck? I think or is it speed struck? I haven't heard of is that, that one. A typo, we think. I think that's Skitty, a typo. Skitty Cityscapes Sim Builder. Of course, you can go with the list of the other tw- uh, sixteen games, I guess, on any of your Apple Arcade podcast services. We ask people, of course, to write in to be part of the show at kindoffunny.com slash kfgd, where you can write in with your questions, comments, concerns, but more importantly, your squad up requests. Today, Blinky Bops needs helps on PlayStation. You can hit them up at Blinky Bops, Blinky Bops. B-L-I-N-K-I-E-B-O-P-S. At the moment, I only play first-person shooter multiplayer games. I would love to branch out into looter shooters or story-driven games. I've tried to play these types of games in the past, but no games have held my ADHD brain ho- have Oh, no games have held, yeah, held my ADHD brain hostage. Would love to have someone to play through some co-op games of that nature. If you would like to help Blinky Bops, hit up Blinky Bops. Blinky bop, bop, bops. Uh, we ask people watching live to correct us on your wrong, but since we only quoted ourselves, we weren't wrong. Oh, no, here we go. Here we go. Nano has one. It's Disney Spellstruck. Oh. It's Disney words with friends, basically. Blessing. Get your head out of your ass. Thank you, Nano. Mike, believe it or not, the week isn't over. Nope. Tomorrow is Friday, another weekday, meaning you'll get another episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily. It will be Tim and Blessing hosting the show for you. But let me tell you, 
You are not leaving us yet, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, on this very show, if you're watching on YouTube live, or Twitch live, or YouTube later, we're going to do our little post show until 1130, where we go through the super chats on YouTube, mm -hmm. answer some questions. Then after that, <laughs> KFW, kind of mania. The season finale is popping off. Four amazing matches. And then if that wasn't enough, four amazing matches on May the 4th, we're doing a bunch of Star Wars stuff. <laughs> Son of a TIE fighter, Greg. TIE fighter. Yip girl. There it is. Yip there it is. Girl. We'll see you in a bit. Bring well, we got to do the Q&A thing first. But. And then the, the KFW girl. thing. And then KFW. You guys got the costumes real early. It looks so oh, good. Damn. I can't I wait time to like, go run errands. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see these morons uh, celebrate Star, Star Wars Day with Kev... 2D2. Uh -huh. You can catch it on live. Twitch.tv slash Kwan Kenobi. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. You can um, catch it live um, on uh, YouTube. What is this shit now? What the fuck is bring this? Bring it in. Bring it in. Oh, my God. It's a TIE fighter. Watch out. I'm in the... <laughs> Greg, red leader, red leader. Watch out behind you. <laughs> YouTube.com slash kind of funny games later. If you're not watching live, you can catch it there as one of our streams. Uh, Nick forgot his uh, possibly the most serious day of I think it's gonna be kind a fun of funny time. journalism ever. <laughs> <laughs> Ends with this. Nick, Nick lost his. Uh, now there's just an RC car driving in. What does this have to do with it? Well, this cap 2D2. That's one of the games we're gonna play today. On Nick was like, this, man, I lost, my, uh, <laughs> I lost my Kylo Ren wig. And we looked, he just has a mullet. He's just, it's just a black mullet. <laughs> I found this in an A's hat. I don't know what the costume Oh, was. yes, yes, yes. There we go. Oh, you, you, you stole one of the Bash we, Brothers. Bash Brothers. We, have a, okay. we have a costume yeah. closet now. Thing. Ladies and gentlemen. Like red band around it, I'm Rambo. We couldn't do this without you on patreon.com slash kind of funny games or patreon.com slash kind of funny. Thank you for your support. Go there to get this show ad free. Go there to watch the PS. I love you. XOXO show recorded today. Go there to support Nick's wig habit. All right. Oh yeah. But until, until next, uh, oh, I forgot you're doing something else. I thought your guy was like, what now? What now? Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, it's been our pleasure to serve you. And then we're right into the post show. And now it's time for post show. Am like, I didn't know already. when it yeah, started. Yeah. Like I was ready to cut at any second. No, nah, no, nah, really you gotta let them work. All right, call. welcome in everybody watching live over on Twitch and on YouTube. Welcome to your kind of funny games daily post show, where myself, Andy, and Greg dive a little bit deeper into today's news topics, and of course, any topic of discussion that you may want to bring to all of us. Of course, you can get your voice heard and you can get involved over with YouTube with your Super Chats or your resubs over on Twitch. And we already got a number of you coming in with your Super Chats just like Luke Milo Design writes in and says, Greg, I resubbed. Hit me with them diapers, big dog. Ah, hey, hey yeah, think about it. To send your way. Think about it. Of what course. Oh, he's, he's, he couldn't resub before because he had a baby. Uh -huh. And he's like, if you can help me with diapers. And I'm like, I got some extra diapers. I got some threes and fives. What do you need? There Look, I'll tell you what, some bounty double stacked uh, paper towels goes a long way. Trust mm -hmm. me. So it'd become a diaper. Trust me. Uh, Albert E. writes in, and this one's going to come to you first. He said, Phil, meaning he said, good games won't change things. Misunderstanding of the e or 360 era success. He proved that their games won't improve because they don't value that. Sad. What do you think I about think that? That's a misinterpretation. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I mean, I am of the mindset that good games will change things, right? Like, deliver us good games, people will come. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah, you will deliver us good games. Some and, worst, and this is some of the worst Star Wars impressions I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> uh, Greg, my, my Obi-Wan Kenobi is just John that's Lennon. That's it's just John Lennon. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It it's is. just John it Lennon. Is. Um, I, th that was one part that I definitely disagreed with, Mike, because I do think, I think he's right in saying that if they release their version of the Naughty Dog or the mm -hmm. Sony Santa Monica or whatever game, you know, big insomniac blockbuster title. Yeah. People aren't going to throw out their PlayStation 4s and go to Xbox. I agree with that. But I think that will encourage people to go look for new experiences and try to play that big first-party title that Join is... Join your like ecosystem. The must-have yeah. of that year, you know, of that, of that quarter or whatever, you know? Yeah, exactly. I, I understand what he meant. I think people were running with it a bit too far, and I understand why, but it is that idea that, yeah, like... Just making an awesome game isn't going to get you to throw your, your PlayStation. Well, like, there's a bigger 
as we talked about with the library, there's a bigger thing happening here than just a great library. Yeah, we're building something different now, right? We're building something bigger right. than just your console, right? Games are a big facet of that and are a huge helpful driver, but there is something bigger going on within Xbox and Microsoft that they're going to try to push to all of us gamers. And it was a wild line, right? Starfields could come out 11 out of 10. That's not going to make people just give up their PlayStation, 100%. right? And it's so true on that one. I could one. be bribed, though, Phil. <laughs> uh, Mike, can I tell you your eyes look beautiful? Today? Thanks, homie. Thanks, homie. You I appreciate that. I mean, we've missed they you always a lot are. here. They're popping uh, out. Did you have a good trip? I did, I know yeah. you can't talk about it, but like, flight was okay? Oh, yeah. We had a good time. Me and Tim had a great little pre-birthday dinner with Elise mm -hmm. uh, Willems and James Willems and Chris Henke. Love that, Chris Henke. A lot of appetizers. Elise and James are still together, huh? Yeah. Still huh. kicking. <laughs> thought that'd be done by now. <laughs> uh, let's go on over to Micah F. He writes in and says, great job on the X-Cast this week. It's amazing to get this interview and a Nuggets uh, and the Nuggets IRL stream in the same week. Well, thank you so much, Micah, for thank watching you. that. And the Nugs, of course, Greg, I don't know if you know. A lot of hate we're but getting. A lot of hate. But BK somehow threw the dart, got in the middle of the rankings right there, thanks to their chicken fries. Turns out there's spicy chicken fries now on the horizon. Oh, baby. Could have to re-rank. Oh, Could have to re-rank, just letting you know. Yeah, the, the Burger King stuff, Greg, I, I compared it to a lot of these MCU movies we rank when we do Ragu Bagu. Sure. And maybe there's two bad guys, and one of them kind of crappy, but the other one's so strong, so sure, powerful, sure, sure, such sure, a good sure. acting performance that's that, a that great elevates it. That's know? a great comparison. Absolutely. The chicken Elevate fries, it. like, the chicken fries, in my opinion, were the... Give me a, an acting, an actor from MC, a bad guy. Uh, Cross. Oh, fuck yeah, cross. Fuck. The right. cross. All right, let's keep it going. D Cash writes in. Oh, no, no. Let's start off with Casual Noob Gamer talking about Redfall. Fixing brain dead AI and share progression in co op, I feel, will fix 75% of the problem. Fixing bugs in first per or FPS, other 25% of the game, is a great concept for Arcane, in my opinion. Do you think that is the major fix that they need to identify as the brain dead AI and share progression in co op? <laughs> I mean,. The share compression in co-op, honestly, no. And okay. I know that's bold, and I know that's wow. crazy. Okay. Because I think it gets blown out of proportion. Because, again, you could compare it to other games. Dead Island 2, when I joined Mike's game, I don't pr progress my quests. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm progressing my weapons. I'm progressing my level. I'm progressing my skill tree. Like, that's what's more important. Like, I don't get me wrong. It'd be nice to pop in and get, get the... The Borderlands 3 thing, right? you've played this before, do you want to skip it? Division, you've played this before, do you want to skip it? That'd be nice, and it, it, they could pass that, would be fine. Brain did, I, I would go far, but it's more like what you're talking about, it, just like mission structure mission in general. Structure. Like, is yeah. it really, that's not going to fix the fi fact the boss wasn't fun. It's not going to fix the fact that every vampire la uh, layer is the same vampire layer. Like, I don't, I think it's beyond that. I, I think, think there's I a lot think more on. unique situations. Yeah. I, I, I think of what Destiny does with their world events and, Obviously, this would be a little bit different because it's not a bunch of people on a server. It's you and your friend or whoever the hell. But I love the idea of seeing something unique every once in a while that isn't something regular. Something that kind of like, oh, shit, I didn't even know this is in the game. And it popped up when I did this and this thing. Yeah, and yeah. this random enemy uh, popped up. Like, I think more situ situational, conditional things, uh, game design-wise, could make the experience feel a bit more unique but but like then but that's what we're talking about like at that point like you're changing the are DNA. they no man <laughs> skying this yeah. and it's yeah. going to be completely different or is it or uh, but realm reborn is it going to be final fantasy 15 15 yeah no 14 14? Realm Royale. Uh -huh. <laughs> is it going to be mean, 14 where you like change dramatically everything about yeah. the game I'm, I'm no game developer so i don't know you what's sure going are. on behind the hood right but when you talk about fixing the brain dead AI and share progression and co-op, those are like the smaller, easy wins that I would assume, hey, could we identify this and do it? That would make a more positive impact. But like you said, I think the root cause of this is just the game itself when it comes down to mission structure, right? Like when you play that for multiple hours, you're going to say, hey, this isn't fun anymore. I'm bored of that, right? But if you elevated co-op and the AI, maybe you have a little more fun. Maybe it's easier to do than fixing the whole situation itself more let's more, go let's get more of that division content you yeah know that, you know you got andy he said I he was, was excited about the hard we playing. i was like damn i, I want to play hardlands yeah oh brother let's go on over to d cash who says congratulations <laughs> mike and team people online were expecting softball questions from kind of funny and i was proud to see you ask the tough questions and surprise them fuck well, thank em. you oh, fuck them you're the best andy thank you guys uh you know yeah what i mean appreciate that Unless always uh, Bander SN writes in. I thought it was fucked up. You didn't ask Phil any KFW questions, but I understand you only had 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was, those were up next. Those are my <laughs> next 15. And right. Bander SN writes in and says, Phil's words on game libraries was very on point. 
Steam players got so pissed off when Epic Game Source started, people want to stay in one spot. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. I totally, right? I mean, people's library, it's so interesting of like, that was the generation of digital libraries. That's when it all began and changed up everything. And they missed the mark on that one. And they got so far behind that it is a tough sell to get anyone now to drop and just jump over right now. Yeah. Uh, let's keep it going. Foxy Steve. First off, amazing job, guys. Do you think Microsoft overestimated the state of Bethesda Project slash studios at the time of acquisition? No, I don't think it's an overestimate. Well, I mean, I guess what, is he, what do you mean by overestimate? I guess I have to ask the question back to you. I think they knew what they were getting. I think it was that they were getting so much and worried about so many different things that you hear the pitch for Redfall. You play, you see a level of it. You, you're not getting in the weeds of, oh, well, all these levels and things look the same. The map's kind of empty. The mission structure's mm -hmm. this. You can't do that. Oh my God, what the fuck? Like, I think there's like, you come in, you got a presentation on all these games, you see clips from, you're like, oh, that looks great. And it's also like, you have a, a game developer with multiple studios and you trust all of them. And so the, if Redfall was being made by some brand new team of 20 people, 30, 40 people or whatever, yeah. then I think you have to be a bit more, you know, hands on a bit more mm -hmm. direct with mm -hmm. your feedback. And, but I like at this point you say, Oh, arcane is making a, a, a like a vampire kind of looter shooter sort of thing. Well, it's arcane. We have to trust them because they've, they've put out really good products in the past. And I think that that's where you can like, I don't think you overestimate that. I think you, you're you getting like a known entity in our, what Arcane does. So I think it's kind of a weird thing to... It's like buying a baseball team and all the team is like kicking ass and all the players are incredible. And then they go out and suddenly they're striking out. It's like, well, fuck, I didn't... Like, how did this happen? Mm -hmm. I thought they were going <laughs> to pop off. So it's like, can you really blame the acquisition in that point? I don't know. Yeah. Also coming in while the game is in development already, right? Like this isn't early on. This team is already entrenched in this. This is the vision. We're going forward with it. And like you said, the sell, right? If Arcane's going to try something different. Well, hey, we're all about trying something different, right? That's why we're acquiring you. We want you to get outside the ballpark. Okay, show me what you got. And see, clearly it was too far gone for anything like that. And Deathloop just being released and having massive critical uh, appeal and having really, really great review scores, like, you go, God damn, we really got a winner. Look at, look at like, <laughs> unfortunately, that's not an Xbox exclusive, but uh -huh. we know what all these devs are capable of, so, yeah. Uh, Cameron Kennedy writes in and says, proud of you, Mike. Loved the spoiler cast, Greg. Hair looks great today, Andy. Oh, yeah, I was like, spoiler cast isn't live. Oh, right, they watch live on Patreon. They, they watch also, live. Kind of funny, just like wow. you can. Jeff the Maverick writes in and says, Greg, what's your favorite kind of pasta? Oh, man, egg noodles. Huh. You never had them? No. It's egg, so. Oh, is it heavy egg? No. I mean, well, first of all, well, they call I mean, most pasta has an egg in it. False like, advertising. Most pasta has an egg. It's not that at all. <laughs> well, he's making it sound like they egg noodles, you know what I mean? You ever heard of an egg bagel? What's up with an egg bagel? They're golden. They're delicious. I love an egg bagel. Do they too. suck? No. What, Everything what is, has <laughs> eggs in it. I understand you don't want to eat an egg. I get that. That's weird, but I get it. Birthday cake has eggs. Eggs right? in it. Well, I mean, I, I get like eggs. it's in it, you know what I mean? But like, is it the taste? No, you know I mean? no, like, brown, no, 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 no. They in don't them, taste are still like delicious. eggs. Brownies are delicious. <laughs> brownies are excellent. <laughs> so egg pasta, are they shaped like an egg? No. They're wavy. You probably, you've had egg pasta. You've had egg pasta. Okay. Ma, the pasta man makes I'm more of an angel hair type jabroni, you know what I mean? Or a mac and cheese little... Half Elbow. smile. Elbows, yeah. Oh, they call them elbows. Elbow Andy, what's your no way. Pasta? Shut up. That's Elbow what they call them. Yeah. Man, Elbow this guy's, this guy's, guy's experience. You've been hanging out with the pasta man. I've been hanging out with the pasta shows, man. Bro. Yeah, what's yeah. a pasta yeah, man going to make me eat mac and cheese? When we launched that one show that we put it on, but we haven't talked about. I mean, oh. I think. Oh, okay. Oh. You don't know what I'm talking Andy about. Andy tried. No. <laughs> I don't. I guess we said it's going to be an episode kind of munchies, which we funded during Patreon. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, okay. I'm going to eat mac and cheese for the first time. Yeah. Wow. Different. I can't wait. You know, Barrett, I don't want to. I don't want. You want to know who wins KFW too? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> fucking tell me right now. <laughs> I can't go that deep into it. Right. Uh, let's keep it going right now. Up next, Bear King writes in and says, "Great job uh, to the entire kind of funny crew. I like to see more great interviews like this. Proud of y'all." Well, thank you for that, Bear King. And yeah, we've been very fortunate enough to have some really awesome content and great interviews here at Kind of Funny. Tell Jim go Ryan on. to stop being a coward and come on PS I Love You. You know, we want to talk with Jim. Okay, yeah, yeah. Who would be your dream hangout with uh, PS I Love You? Honestly, I'd love to have Herman through. Like Jim is okay. fine and like, but it's like he's very corporate. Whereas you know Herman, I haven't talked on camera with 
since he was in charge of Gorilla. Okay. So to see, like, hey, what's it been like to go from being in charge of Gorilla to being in charge of Worldwide Studios, being in charge of First Party? What's Jim that Ryan like? could be AI, and we don't know it. It's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every time he pops up on that black screen, people are like, this is going to be, is going to say rendered on the PlayStation yeah. 5. Mm-hmm. I want to talk with uh, Pete Hines and Aaron Greenberg again because the two of them together have some really good energy. Sure. And of course, we can talk Xbox and Bethesda marketing and, you know, the pros and the cons of that that we've clearly seen sure. with Redfall. And uh, moving forward with that, I think that would be exciting. You think during uh, when Pete Hines comes out during the Starfield Direct, he's going to tap his leg for us? You got to get that message out soon, right? Sure. I want him. Are they, just, yeah, that's pretty recorded, I want him right? Yeah. The, the Stone Cold double. <laughs> I don't think he's doing that. <laughs> All right, let's keep it moving right now. Uh, Mad Rocks writes in and says, "I understand why Phil answered the question the way that he did, but it's tough to not see his answers as empty palitudes." Greg, platitudes. Platitudes. Oh, platitudes, like platypus. Yeah, just like platypus. Right? You ever seen a platypus? That's where it comes from. <laughs> you ever seen a platypus? I have. It's crazy. I've never seen one. In real life? Yeah, I've only seen the Beanie Baby stuffed animal. I think I've seen one at a zoo. Are they ugly? Oh, every stop. Every uh-huh. Time. Have you never seen an image of a platypus? No, I've seen an image. Okay, just making sure. Just yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm, I'm just thinking like the zoo, you know what I mean? Y'all ever seen one? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a platypus. I wonder, that. Like, do they have like weird hair? On their beak, or is the bill like no? The that. beak, is, the beak I mean? is just a bill. It's just a. I've been playing a little bit of dredge, and you know they got ugly fish in there. So I thought the platypus might be ugly. Dredge, great cool question. Game. Thank you for your question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think these? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about Phil's answers there? PR talk meant nothing. What do you think? No, I don't, I don't think, think so. I think, and I think, I, I think that's the reason this is resonating right now. It's across eighty six thousand views right now on YouTube. Mike, you're killing it over there. Oh, thank you. And it's the fact that. I mean, it, you know, I saw somebody do the thing. Oh, it's, this is just word salad. And I'm mm-hmm. like, lots of times, press releases and, and canned PR quotes are. And I think just because you can predict some of the things Phil would say doesn't mean he's being disingenuous. And then the fact that, yeah, like him taking responsibility and stuff, like, again, you can read his, you can watch him talk and you can see his body language. And again, I think he's being incredibly real with this. It's like, I don't think these were empty platitudes i do think he feels like he fucked up i think he and i do think this is going to lead to change at xbox whether that's internal and we never really know about it or whatever but like they're well aware of what they have to do and what they can't do and i think they uh, they knew they couldn't do this but again to their point they didn't expect it to be this bad they didn't expect it to be these double digit points lower on metacritic yeah no i don't it all sounded very real and open and he got even more real when I wasn't expecting him to get even more real. So, like, I, I don't think you can call them empty platitudes at all. I'm going to give Nick some empty platitudes today. What does that mean? <laughs> well, what I don't know. That? I'm going <laughs> to give him some. Just say Up things. next, Noah Ohm writes in and says, not a question, but just wanted to share the love and congratulate everyone for the fantastic interview. XCast team did incredible. So proud of the kind of funny team. Hey, thanks, Noah, for the kind words right there. And Pyro writes in and says, great job on the XCast interview. Is there a game that you think that Xbox could surprise release that would bring some goodwill back to the community. Greg, we talked about that, right? June is a major prove to us that you got it, but also I'm still going to be left wanting more. In my opinion, Greg, I think Forza could be the shadow drop release. Ooh. Forza has been, quote unquote, in my opinion, you know, I, I do uh, seasons differently than everybody, but Forza was supposed to be spring 2023, right? We've pushed back that. We don't have a date. Could this be, hey, welcome to the big Xbox show. You want to come in here and hang out with us? Uh, Force is now out. You have something to play. Right? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. like the easy layup win, you would think. Oh, I'm just here because I know you and Greg got to get ready for KFW. And so yeah, if yeah. you guys want to go get ready, I can hang out with Andy for a few minutes. We're running in at 1130, we're, aren't we? We're, yeah, we're wrapping this up right now, actually. But Blessing, what game nice does shirt, X- could Xbox release a game in June or maybe Shadow Drop it that would uh, get people excited again? Shadow Drop in June? Yeah. I mean, if, can I just pick any game or something realistic? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Wolfenstein 3. Oh, well, like, ooh. yeah. Ooh, that could be like, for real. It's, it's here. No, and it's that's out not now. for real. He said any game. game. He said any game. He said any game. I mean, well, I think Red, another big one. Mike followed up, said that could be for real. And no, that, that be can't real. be for real because they're working on the Indiana Jones. We don't, we don't know. We don't know. Right. I, I also so don't think that there's an answer because they shadow dropped Hi-Fi Rush and we're, look where we, we're at now. And I don't think Forza is that magical answer. That's true. How about a big third-party deal? Guess what? Armored Core coming to Game Pass on release. I mean, I think that'd be neat. I think that'd be neat. I don't think that would uh, be something that would move the needle in terms of changing the narrative of Xbox. You know, I think that'd be a thing where people go, oh, man, that's awesome. And then they play and they had fun with it. But I think right now for Game Pass, you need 
the exclusives to really push it, right? Like the third party stuff, unless you're getting like a lot of third parties, I don't know if one game, even no, no matter what the game, I don't know if one game is going to shift the narrative entirely and get people excited. Love that. Andy and Greg? <sighs> what do they got to do in June? What they got to do in June is come out and be like, first off, here's Starfield, and this is why it is awesome. This is why it is cool. This is why it's going to be more than just uh, what uh, Bethesda title you already know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's going to be more than what you expect. Yes. Here's why. Uh, and then, yeah, it has to be like, here are the other games we've been talking about, and I know you're not going to get windows for all of them, but at least something beyond Starfield, maybe before Starfield like you're talking about. And then, yeah, Shadow Drop would help, but it needs to be like, they need to reinvigorate the enthusiasm behind Xbox and their audience. In the way Capcom is really good with dropping demos, do, we th do you think we get any demos from Xbox this summer? The only big demo you could do is Starfield. But oh, then, what did you say? I, I was going to say Hellblade release, right? But if we're going to do one game a quarter, that means summertime is summer and slash fall is Forza. Then, of course, the holiday season to end the year is Starfield. Then the next year would be Hellblade, in my opinion, in spring. That oh, first spring. Q1. Yeah, that would be the domino of one game a quarter. That would start the domino effect. Because if I burn Hellblade now, then I get into another awkward situation where what is the next game to replace Hellblade in that? I think if you're, if you're talking about quarter, right? Like Starfield right now is slated for September. And so you're talking about that third quarter, that, that fall season. I think you still want something for winter. And that could be something low-key. But I think it could be exciting going back to the demo idea of if Hellblade is coming out in, let's say, November, December. If you put out a really, really good vertical slice of Hellblade as a demo on Xbox in June... People play it, and it looks and runs the way that it looked during the Game Awards when we saw that trailer. That looked fucking fantastic. If it looks and plays with like that. With the large man baby. With the problem. large man baby, and it <laughs> runs great. Like, if it runs in 60 FPS, if it looks as incredible as it did on the Game Awards screen, I think that makes people go, oh, shit. All right, like, this is what we've been talking about in terms of the dominoes falling. Like, you're telling us we got Starfield, and then this coming out? Oh, my God, let's go. Can they actually do that? Is that realistic to have a vertical slice like that? That's a year or half a year before even the launch is. That's a tall ask, but I think that would do a lot in terms of shifting the needle. Video we'll games are out. cool, y'all. Find out. Video games June. are cool. Get ready. I mean, definitely looking forward to some big third-party partnerships with Game Pass. Looking forward to Game Pass family memberships. Looking to cloud extending to my whole entire library. I'm looking for a new refresh of the homepage that actually gets me excited. There's so much to look forward to. Absolutely. But you know what I'm looking forward to? KF freaking Woo! W. Kind of mania about to go down right now on your screens. If you're watching on Twitch, you don't got to go anywhere because it's going to stay live. If you're watching on YouTube, hey, there's a new link. I want you to go click on it. I want you to join the mayhem because KFW is going down and you don't want to miss out on the fun. It's May the 4th and we got a whole lot of fun coming your way. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in just mere minutes.